General relativity, also known as the general theory of relativity, is a big idea in physics created by Albert Einstein in 1915. It's the current way we understand gravity. The person who challenged Newton's thinking of gravity as a force between objects, Einstein said it's actually a bending or curving of space and time. This bending happens because of stuff like matter and light in the universe. This concept of time and space shocked the world and proved Newton theory to be incorrect. The math that describes this bending is called the Einstein field equations. Newton's law of gravity is like a simpler version of general relativity. It works well in situations where gravity isn't too strong or space isn't too curved. But when things get extreme, like near massive objects or at high speeds, general relativity makes more accurate predictions. For example, it explains things like how time can slow down near a heavy object, how light can bend around massive objects, and how the universe began with the Big Bang. So far, all tests of general relativity have agreed with what the theory predicts. Despite other ideas being suggested, general relativity is still the best explanation we have based on what we've observed. While general relativity explains a lot about gravity, it doesn't fit perfectly with our other big theory, quantum physics. We're still trying to figure out how to make them work together. One of the big mysteries is how to combine gravity with the other forces like the strong and weak nuclear forces and electromagnetism. One cool thing about general relativity is that it predicts black holes, which are super weird regions in space where gravity is super strong. Nothing, not even light, can escape from them. We've also seen evidence for things like gravitational lensing, where light gets bent by gravity, and gravitational waves, which are ripples in space caused by big events like colliding black holes. These were observed directly by fancy machines like LIGO. General relativity also helps us understand how the universe is expanding. People think general relativity is really beautiful because it explains so much about how gravity works in the universe. In 1905, Henri Poincaré had this idea about how the electron moves, and he thought it could explain all forces, even gravity. He said relativity was just how we measure things. He even figured out that gravitational waves travel at the speed of light. Then, in 1907, Einstein got interested in gravity too. He started thinking about it by imagining someone falling freely and spent eight years trying to figure out a theory of gravity that fit with his ideas about relativity. Finally, in 1915, he came up with the Einstein field equations, which describe how matter and light affect the shape of space and time. These equations were tough to solve, but in 1916, Carl Schwarzschild found a solution that described black holes. This laid the groundwork for understanding what happens when really massive things collapse under their own gravity. Einstein also used his theory to describe the whole universe in 1917, but he thought it was standing still. Then, in 1929, scientists like Hubble showed that the universe is actually expanding. Einstein called adding a special number to his equations to make them match what people thought at the time the biggest blunder of his life. From 1915 to the 1970s, general relativity was kind of like a cool but not super popular theory. It was way better than Newton's gravity because it explained stuff like Mercury's weird orbit without needing any extra tweaks. Then, in 1919, a big experiment during a solar eclipse showed that it was right about light bending around the sun, which made Einstein famous. But it wasn't until the 1960s and 1970s that people really started to appreciate how awesome general relativity was. They figured out more about black holes and how they're related to crazy things in space called quasars. They also did more tests to check if the theory was right, and it passed with flying colors. Plus, they started using it to understand the whole universe, not just our solar system. People think general relativity is really beautiful because it brings together ideas that used to seem totally different, like space, time, matter and motion. Einstein didn't have a roadmap for figuring it out, he just had this feeling that gravity should be part of how space works, and he was right. Overall, 
it's a theory that's simple, elegant, and makes a lot of sense. To understand general relativity, we can compare it to classical physics and see where they're similar and where they're different. Classical mechanics, which includes Newton's law of gravity, can actually be described using geometry. This idea, combined with the principles of special relativity, helps us get a rough idea of what general relativity is all about. In classical mechanics, we think of an object's motion as a mix of free motion and any changes caused by outside forces. These changes are described by Newton's second law, which says that the force on an object equals its mass times its acceleration. In classical mechanics, we say that objects in free motion follow straight lines at a steady speed. In modern terms, we call these paths geodesics, which are straight lines in curved spacetime. So, in general relativity, we think about motion in terms of the shape of space and time, just like in classical mechanics. But instead of only thinking about flat space, we consider how space can curve and bend around massive objects, which changes the paths that objects take. On the other hand, if we observe how objects move freely and consider the forces acting on them, we might think we could use their motion to figure out the shape of space and time. But things get tricky when gravity is involved. According to Newton's law of gravity, confirmed by experiments, objects fall in the same way regardless of their properties. This idea is known as the universality of free fall, or the weak equivalence principle. This principle means that we can't tell the difference between objects moving freely in a gravitational field and objects accelerating in free space. Imagine being inside a closed room where everything is falling at the same rate due to gravity. You wouldn't be able to tell if you were in a gravitational field or if the room was being pushed upward by a rocket at the same rate. Because of this, we can define a new type of motion called free fall under gravity, which also helps define the geometry of space and time. In this geometry, space looks normal, but spacetime as a whole is more complicated because the paths of objects depend on their trajectory. This means that spacetime is curved, and we need a more complex description than just regular Euclidean geometry. The resulting theory, called the Newton-Carton theory, uses covariant concepts to describe how mass causes spacetime to curve and how objects move in response. Geometric Newtonian gravity is interesting, but it's just a simplified version of classical mechanics, which itself is a simplified version of relativistic mechanics. In special relativity, which is the basis for relativistic mechanics, physics follows a different set of rules called Lorentz symmetry. This means that the laws of physics don't change depending on how fast you're moving, unlike in classical mechanics where they do. With Lorentz symmetry, we use things called light cones to describe the structure of spacetime. These cones show which events can influence each other and which can't, based on whether signals or interactions could travel faster than light. Together with the paths of freely falling objects, we can use light cones to figure out the shape of spacetime. Special relativity works great when gravity isn't involved, but once gravity comes into play, things get more complicated. Special relativity is based on how light moves, so it's possible that it has its own set of preferred frames. Different assumptions about these frames can lead to different predictions about things like gravitational redshift, which is how the frequency of light changes as it moves through a gravitational field. However, experiments have shown that frames in free fall are the ones where light behaves according to special relativity. This idea, known as the Einstein equivalence principle, is crucial for extending special relativistic physics to include gravity. While special relativity holds up well in free-falling frames, time measured by clocks in a gravitational field doesn't follow its rules. This suggests a more general geometry, similar to what we saw in the Newtonian case. At small scales, all free-falling frames are basically the same and approximately Minkowskian. But on larger scales, we need a different kind of geometry called semi- or pseudo-Riemannian geometry. This geometry is described by a metric tensor, which measures lengths and angles, and it's different from the Minkowski metric of special relativity. The connection that goes along with this geometry, called the levi civita connection, makes space locally Minkowskian, meaning it looks flat in small areas. 
General relativity is a theory that describes how gravity works using something called a metric. The core of the theory is Einstein's equations, which connect the shape of a four-dimensional spacetime to the energy and momentum present in that spacetime. In classical mechanics, we think of gravity as a force that pulls objects off their straight paths. But in general relativity, objects move on straight paths through curved spacetime. This curvature is caused by the energy and momentum of matter. In simple terms, spacetime tells matter how to move, and matter tells spacetime how to curve. While general relativity uses tensors to describe gravity, in certain situations, its predictions match up with those of Newton's law of gravity. This happens when gravity is weak and objects are moving slowly compared to the speed of light. One cool thing about general relativity is that its laws look the same no matter what coordinate system you use. This means that it doesn't rely on any fixed background structures, and it satisfies the principle of relativity, which says that the laws of physics are the same for all observers. Locally, in small areas, spacetime looks flat, and the laws of physics are the same for everyone. According to the equivalence principle, gravity affects the flow of time. Light traveling into a gravity well gets blue-shifted, while light moving away from the gravity well gets red-shifted. Together, these effects are called the gravitational frequency shift. Generally, processes near a massive body occur more slowly compared to those farther away, known as gravitational time dilation. Gravitational redshift has been observed both in laboratory experiments and astronomical observations. Gravitational time dilation has been measured using atomic clocks on Earth and is also evident in the operation of the Global Positioning System GPS. Observations of binary pulsars provide tests in stronger gravitational fields. All these results support general relativity, but currently, they cannot differentiate between general relativity and other theories that uphold the equivalence principle. In general relativity, light follows the curvature of spacetime as it passes near massive objects like stars. This effect was first observed by noting how the light from stars or distant quasars bends as it passes close to the sun. This phenomenon occurs because light follows what we call a light-like or null geodesic, which is like the straight lines light travels along in classical physics. These geodesics are a generalization of the idea that the speed of light is constant in special relativity. While the bending of light can be explained by extending the idea of free fall to light, the angle of deflection calculated this way is only half the value predicted by general relativity. Another related phenomenon is the Shapiro time delay, where light signals take longer to travel through a gravitational field compared to in the absence of that field. This prediction has been tested successfully many times. In 1916, Albert Einstein predicted the existence of gravitational waves, disturbances in the fabric of spacetime that travel at the speed of light. These waves are similar to electromagnetic waves and were directly detected by the advanced LIGO team on February 11, 2016, originating from the merger of two black holes. Gravitational waves can be visualized by imagining how they distort a ring of freely floating particles as they pass through it, creating a characteristic rhythmic pattern. While describing arbitrarily strong gravitational waves is challenging due to the nonlinear nature of Einstein's equations, linear approximations are accurate enough for the extremely weak waves detected on Earth from distant cosmic events. Some exact solutions describe gravitational waves without approximation, like a wave train traveling through empty space or Gaudi universes, which are expanding cosmos filled with gravitational waves. However, for astrophysical scenarios like black hole mergers, numerical methods are currently the only way to model gravitational waves accurately. General relativity also makes unique predictions about the behavior of orbiting bodies, such as overall rotation of planetary orbits, orbital decay due to the emission of gravitational waves, and effects related to the relativity of direction. These predictions differ from those of classical mechanics and have been confirmed by observations. According to general relativity, a binary system emits gravitational waves, leading to the loss of energy in a decrease in the distance between the two orbiting bodies, along with their orbital period. 
While this effect is too small to observe within the solar system or for typical double stars, it becomes significant for close binary pulsars, where two neutron stars orbit each other. Neutron stars are extremely compact, resulting in substantial energy emission in the form of gravitational radiation. The deflection of light by gravity gives rise to a fascinating array of astronomical phenomena known as gravitational lensing. When a massive object is positioned between an observer and a distant target object, the gravitational field of the intervening mass can bend the path of light, causing the observer to see multiple distorted images of the target. These effects can manifest in various ways depending on the configuration, scale, and mass distribution of the objects involved. They may include two or more images, a bright ring known as an Einstein ring, or partial rings called arcs. The discovery of gravitational lensing dates back to 1979, and since then, more than a hundred gravitational lenses have been observed. Gravitational lensing has become an invaluable tool in observational astronomy. It is utilized to detect the presence and distribution of dark matter, acting as a natural telescope for observing distant galaxies. Furthermore, it provides an independent estimate of the Hubble constant and offers valuable insights into the structural evolution of galaxies through statistical analyses of lensing data. Observations of binary pulsars have provided strong indirect evidence for the existence of gravitational waves, as discussed earlier. Detecting these waves is a significant goal of current research related to relativity. Several land-based gravitational wave detectors are operational, including the interferometric detectors. Additionally, various pulsar timing arrays are utilizing millisecond pulsars to detect gravitational waves originating from binary supermassive black holes. Observations of gravitational waves promise to complement observations in the electromagnetic spectrum significantly. They are expected to provide valuable insights into black holes, neutron stars, white dwarfs, certain types of supernova implosions, and processes in the very early universe. For example, they could reveal the signature of certain types of hypothetical cosmic strings. In February 2016, the Advanced LIGO team announced the groundbreaking detection of gravitational waves from a black hole merger, marking a historic milestone in the field. General relativity predicts the formation of black holes when the ratio of an object's mass to its radius becomes sufficiently large. These are regions of space from which nothing, not even light, can escape. In stellar evolution models, neutron stars of around 1.4 solar masses and stellar black holes with a few to a few dozen solar masses are thought to be the final state for the evolution of massive stars. Typically, a galaxy contains one supermassive black hole with a few million to a few billion solar masses at its center, believed to have played a crucial role in the formation of galaxies and larger cosmic structures. Compact objects such as black holes are incredibly efficient at converting gravitational energy into electromagnetic radiation. Accretion, the falling of dust or gaseous matter onto stellar or supermassive black holes, produces luminous astronomical objects, including diverse kinds of active galactic nuclei and microquasars. This process can generate relativistic jets, focused beams of highly energetic particles flung into space at nearly light speed. General relativity is crucial for modeling these phenomena, and observations provide strong evidence for the existence of black holes with properties predicted by the theory. Black holes are important targets in the search for gravitational waves. Merging black hole binaries can produce some of the strongest gravitational wave signals detectable on Earth. The phase directly before the merger, known as the chirp, could serve as a standard candle to deduce the distance to merger events and probe cosmic expansion at large distances. Additionally, the gravitational waves produced as a stellar black hole plunges into a supermassive one could provide direct information about the geometry of the supermassive black hole. Astronomical observations of the cosmological expansion rate allow us to estimate the total amount of matter in the universe, although the nature of that matter remains mysterious in part. Approximately 90% of all matter appears to be dark matter, which has mass but does not interact electromagnetically and cannot be observed directly. 
There is no generally accepted description of this new kind of matter within the framework of known particle physics or otherwise. Observational evidence from redshift surveys of distant supernovae and measurements of the cosmic background radiation also indicate that the evolution of our universe is significantly influenced by a cosmological constant, resulting in an acceleration of cosmic expansion, or by a form of energy with an unusual equation of state known as dark energy. The nature of dark energy remains unclear. An even larger question is the physics of the earliest universe, prior to the inflationary phase and close to where classical models predict the Big Bang singularity. An authoritative answer would require a complete theory of quantum gravity, which has not yet been developed. General relativity has indeed proven to be a remarkably successful model of gravitation and cosmology, passing numerous observational and experimental tests. However, its incompleteness is evident in addressing the challenges posed by quantum gravity and the nature of spacetime singularities. Additionally, the observed phenomena attributed to dark energy and dark matter hint at the possibility of new physics beyond general relativity. If you enjoy the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, you can also watch our latest episode on our home planet Earth. See you there.